I started writing down all of the things that I was experiencing that I was struggling with when I first started working in dementia care, I started writing down what my clients were struggling, the concerns that they were coming to me for, and just the questions that they had. I combined it all into a course and I'm just excited to get this information out into the world because I feel like there's not enough education on dementia out there. Welcome to the Listen for Life podcast with Genevieve Richardson. Genevieve is a speech language pathologist rehabilitating adults with communication challenges after a stroke or due to a neurological impairment. Living with aphasia is hard. Caregiving is hard. You are not alone. Get equipped with knowledge from experts in the field and professionals you need to know. We'll hear stories and experiences from others who are navigating life with aphasia. So. Put your earphones in and take a walk outside. This isn't just a podcast. This is a community, a resource, and a support system. We're in this together. Do life. Well, good afternoon, Mary. Hi, how are you? I'm fabulous. I am so excited. We have been putting off this recording. <laughs> I know. I'm like, let me get the course out. <laughs> I know. Right. So let me give the, the audience a little background. Mary and I were introduced through a mutual colleague who thought with me doing speech pathology and you being an occupational therapist that we should get together. I'm grateful to Greg for introducing us. Yes, me too. I'm so excited. So everybody, this is Mary Osborne. Mary, <laughs> tell us the name of your company and how they can find you on the website. Yes. So I'm Mary. I'm an occupational therapist here in Austin. My company is called Your Dementia Therapist and you can find me yourdementiatherapist.com and I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest at Your Dementia Therapist. I will say I do the majority of my work on Instagram through daily videos. So make sure y'all check those out as well. <laughs> Mary is my idol for social media. <laughs> she has got such incredible content, Mary. I'm so grateful to know you because social media is not my thing. You have set an amazing example of what a clinician can do to get good content out to the community that they serve. You're so sweet. I've always loved creating things and, you know, making fun videos. So that is just kind of, I feel like that's where I shine and that's where, you know, I can reach millions of people around the world and share and spread awareness on dementia care. So it's really cool to see that this information is not just something that people here in Texas can have access to, you know, it's all over. So it's a really cool thing. I love it. We'll get you all into this too. <laughs> Boy, yeah, that's going to be a steep learning curve. Uh, so Greg introduced us because he thought with you being an occupational therapist and working in the dementia space and how passionate you are about it, that you and I would be a good fit together because I'm speech pathology and I'm in the more stroke neurologic space. Mm -hmm. Like you and I, we are kindred spirits. So everybody, Mary and I have gotten together in person multiple times and time flies. We have so much to talk about and it's all professional and trying to reach the folks we're trying to reach. Yes, for sure. I know we both share the same passion. It's just really cool to connect with professionals that are passionate about what they do and they love it. So, all right. I want to talk about your course. Yes. Mary has worked so hard, everybody. She has put together this amazing course. Tell us a little bit about it. And at the end, tell us where we can find your course. Yes. I've been working as an occupational therapist for these last 10 years. I've worked directly with individuals who are living with dementia. I've educated their family members and staff members on different approaches and just things that I found that were working throughout the different interventions that I was doing with these patients. And long story short, I created a consulting company last year, opened it up. I have clients here in Austin, Texas. My clients are family members who are taking care of a loved one who's living with dementia. And over this past year, when I first started the company and just since then, I started writing down all of the things that 
I was experiencing that I was struggling with when I first started working in dementia care, I started writing down what my clients were struggling, the concerns that they were coming to me for, and just the questions that they had. So what I did was I wrote these things down. I combined it all into a course and I'm just excited to get this information out into the world because I feel like there's not enough education on dementia out there. You know, I had actually someone call me recently who had a diagnosis of dementia recently diagnosed and was telling me that he was left to a Google search, you know, to find out more about the diagnosis because no one was talking to him about it. It's one of those things that I've just, I knew I needed to make a bigger impact in the world. I saw how my social media followers were increasing and I was just like, the world needs this education. But that being said, so my course is about the difference between normal aging, mild cognitive impairment, dementia. I talk about some different things involved in a dementia diagnosis, talk about a few different types of dementia and symptoms. And I say a few different types because there's over a hundred different types. So this is just kind of like a general course, just to kind of give you an overview. I talk about just different brain changes that impact function and different things to expect throughout the stages. And with the stages of dementia, I have broken those up into early, middle, and late. What I've done with my program is that I've taken common impairments that I've seen, but I'm talking about how you can focus on the abilities that someone has within that impairment and increase quality of life for the person. I also talk about different approaches that I've used and different tips that I've found success with that have led to improved outcomes, less refusals, and just quality of life. I am a huge proponent of like, how can I increase quality of life for everyone involved? That's why I really enjoy this consulting company because I can focus on the client who's the family member who's taking care of their loved one. And I can put all my knowledge together of all the different treatment interventions that I've done. It's truly like a beautiful thing when you can figure out how you can improve quality of life for everybody. So that's my goal. <laughs> that's a little bit about my course and what it's about. So you can access a free mini course if you want to check that out before you take the actual course course. I was thinking maybe you could link that below because it's a long, absolutely we'll put, we'll, all these links in the show notes. <laughs> Sorry. That was kind of an earful, but I just got really excited. No, it's all, it's all good. Talking. It's all good. So if someone were to call you, they come across your website, how, what's the process look like? Yes. So currently I'm only accepting clients in Texas. So they can call me, email me, and then, you know, I kind of chat with them about their concerns, what they're hoping to address within the session and any kind of questions that they might have, if they're a good fit for consulting, we go ahead and I schedule them for the consulting visit. I send out an intake form. My intake form allows me to get to know the client's concerns, which is the person who's caring for their loved one who has dementia. So their top two concerns, and then have ask some questions about their loved one. You know, what are, what are they able to do? Are they having difficulties getting their loved one to bathe, to dress, to eat all the different things? Cause in the world of occupational therapy, we focus on, we call IADLs, which are the instrumental activities of daily living. So these higher level tasks, like the money management, the finances, um, we talk about cooking, cleaning, all of these different things. And then we talk about the ADLs, which are the activities of daily living. So that's like the bathing, dressing, grooming, hygiene. And if they're experiencing any difficulties in these areas and they want to address this, then we'll talk about some different ways to tackle these concerns. So currently you are able to offer consulting services. Probably most families need more than one. Yeah consult. They need ongoing support and you're able to help them do that through consulting services. Mm -hmm. And then I'm guessing your course can help supplement folks that are not in Texas that can take advantage of your one-to-one -one okay. consulting services. So that's why you have the course. Yes, that's exactly why I created it, you know, because it's impossible to meet with every individual person, you oh, know. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> I'm in 12 states. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> so I'm just picking the husband calls you, you go through the intake form, you have an initial consult, 
and then you have visits and you can provide ongoing support mm -hmm. as they need it past the initial training. Yes. Yep. I send out a write-up of recommendations. So they'll have all of the recommendations that we spoke about in the consulting visit. And they'll just have that to refer back to if anything comes up. So it's really a cool thing for them to have access to these different strategies and different things that I talk about with them. I'm a big believer in multimodal training. It's not just auditory because it's easy to process when you're on Zoom or in person talking with somebody. Yeah. Need that visual reinforcement. Exactly. And sometimes, like during the consulting call, there's other questions around. So I'm putting this into the document too. I'm like, don't worry, this is all going to be in there. So, can we talk in general, give the audience some tips either about dementia or changes in the brain? What would you like to talk about? So, give them some takeaways. Yes. Yes. So, I always say, you know, if you have a loved one and you're concerned in any area with their cognition, let's say that you notice that they're repeating the same things over and over again, or maybe you don't live with them, but you are visiting them and you come across their pill organizer and the pills are not taken out on the days that they should be. And if you're noticing like any impairments in their cognition, I would say this is something to talk to the doctor about because you want to rule out and make sure this isn't dementia, right? Because there are a lot of things that can mimic the symptoms of dementia. You know, it could be like a urinary tract infection. It could be sleep disturbances, medication side effects. I mean, there are so many different things. So any cognitive related concerns, first step, go see the primary care doctor and have them take a look, discuss the concerns and see what might be going on. If it is a dementia diagnosis, typically one of the first things that I notice with an individual who has dementia is difficulties performing those IADLs. So those instrumental activities of daily living that I was talking to you about earlier. So um, you might notice they're having difficulty with paying the bills or taking their medications at the times that they're supposed to be taking them, leaving the stove on or the oven on. There's just different things that this is typically what I see like in the early stages of dementia. Would you say primary care physicians are in a spot where they can do a quick screening in the office? Yes. What they'll probably do first is, you know, order blood work and just make sure all the labs are looking okay. And then, you know, discuss with you, like they're going to review your medication, see if there could be a medication side effect. They'll do a thorough review of everything. If they find that this could be something that looks a bit more like dementia, or, you know, they're more concerned about the cognitive, the severity of the cognitive impairment, then that's whenever they would refer to someone like a neurologist to further assess. I would say neurologists are just like any of us in that they get a broad education. Are there some neurologists that are better dementia than others? Yeah, that's a great question. I would actually ask the primary care physician if they are concerned that it's something that they're going to refer to a neurologist for. Do you know anyone who specializes in cognitive impairments related to dementia? I guess the first step would be honestly going to the neurologist, seeing what it could be. Then if it is dementia, maybe just talking to the neurologist about that. Here in Austin, it's hard to find someone that specializes specifically in dementia. So I don't know how common that is in other places, but I know Dr. Bertelson here in town <laughs> and he's one of the only ones here. So I'm not sure what it looks like in other places, but. Of course. Be something if the general family physician was not able to make a direct referral to a dementia neurologist, that would be something to Google. Yeah, for sure. There could be neurologists out there that their main specialty is stroke rehab, you know? So I guess it just depends. So the primary care physician will probably know what neurologists specialize in what that person might need, you know? Speaking of Dr. Bertelson, that you <laughs> and he put together a guide. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So we put together a resource guide for caregivers and family members here in Austin, Texas, and it's called DementiaCaregiversGuide.com. And on the website, we just have a bunch of helpful resources related to caregiver wellness, different 
long-term care facilities and memory care and assisted living, transportation, hospice companies, just all the things that family members and um, caregivers were coming to us for questions that they had. And we were like, well, why don't we just put it together on a website? So then they'll have all those resources in case they needed to look back at it. Like if they were like, oh, I need a home care company. Let me look at the website and see what's in the area. So we put that together to just help family members and caregivers who are taking care of their loved one to make their life easier. Yeah. And you bring up a good point. So just knowing what questions for a caregiver to start asking, to start thinking ahead towards facilities, if there's the finances available to have in-home care, you know, those kinds of things. I'm going to plug my own podcast. You need to look at episode number five, where I interview at Always Best Care, home care company, with some great questions if you have to hire yeah, to, to come in. What else, Mary? What else would you like mm. folks to know about dementia and not sweeping it under the rug? I think that's one of the take-home messages I personally want to share. Yes. If you see yes. something, say something. You need to help get involved because dementia is not a big area that I have worked in. I do know that it can progress. And sometimes it's not the worst case scenario that a family member might be worried about. It's better to get to the doctor, get the labs, look at the whole person. Yes, for sure. If it is a dementia diagnosis, really focusing on what that person is able to do wherever they're at, whatever stage of dementia that they're in, focus on their abilities because we can't focus on what's gone and what we can't get back. Right. So what we can do is focus on the things that they can do and make quality of life better for everybody involved. It's such a dark diagnosis and no one asks for this. Caregivers and family members did not ask for this. They're being thrown into a situation they didn't ask for. Person who's living with dementia didn't ask for this diagnosis, but if there's a way that we can really just focus on that person and what they're able to do, then this is where the magic happens in dementia care. I always share the story of, I was working with an individual in a memory care unit and I'll never forget this. It was a small memory care unit. And this individual's husband was like, you know, I would love for my wife to be able to wheel herself in the wheelchair. And I was asking, I was like, okay, tell me a little bit about her. You know, what was she able to do in the past? What did she like to do? And she was in the stage of dementia where she couldn't answer these questions for me. So I had him tell me a little bit about her. And he's like, she really enjoyed golf. And when I asked her, you know, I heard you used to play golf. She could answer yes, no questions. So I actually used golf in my approach to get her to help wheel her wheelchair. And it was so cool because to see that the husband was able to see how she was able to propel her wheelchair with my assistance and then participate in this game of chair golf. She was able to participate in the game of chair golf and able to propel her chair. And when her husband saw this, he was like, wow, I didn't know she could do any of this. So it's, yeah, focus on the abilities, focus on what they used to love to do, what they're able to do now, and see if there's a way that you can come up with something creative to help with that person's sense of purpose and independence by focusing on these things. But I always think about that story because he was just like, wow, that, is, that was really cool. And it's something they could do together. Yes, for sure. And that, yes, yes, yes. It's a common goal, right? Mm -hmm. Working towards it. And you could tell she was so great at golf because every single golf ball she would make in that hole. I mean, she was amazing. It was just such a cool thing to see. So focusing on the abilities. I love that as yeah. your take home message. That's one of my biggest <laughs> things in dementia care is focusing on what that person's able to do. And as an occupational therapist, you have a unique perspective on how people can set up their house for safety and yes. how they can give the right kind of cues for where their person is functioning at that moment in time to maximize independence and safety. And exactly. And actually in my course, I have eBooks in the course 
which are broken up into the early, middle, and late stage. I talk about some of these just recommendations and tips for each stage and like focusing on, and of course it's general recommendations, but from what I've seen over the years, I've just gathered these different tips and put it all into eBooks. So love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking we need to send folks to your website because <laughs> I've seen your blogs. They are amazing. You have so much content in there, let alone what's on your Instagram page. So we'll make sure to link all of that in the show notes. Anything else before we wrap up today, Mary? I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy chatting with you. <laughs> this is fun. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Mary, and I wish you absolutely the best with your new course. And folks, you need to check out the mini course that she has up. You can link to it from your website, correct? Yeah. See how Mary teaches, see her personality, see her passion. It's going to lead you right into her course. I'm <laughs> so excited for you and for all of the individuals that you're going to positively impact with the information you have pulled together. My goal, I'm always like, I want to change the world of dementia here. I literally have a tattoo that says, be the change. So oh, um, I think I, we need a picture of it. <laughs> be the change. Oh. oh, there it is. I love it. Terrific. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thanks for tuning in to the Listen for Life podcast. We hope you feel empowered and supported. Head over to listenforlifepodcast.com to see the show notes with links and information from today's episode. Do you have a topic, a resource to share, or a guest recommendation? Inquiring minds want to know. Let us know in the comments section. Wishing you a fabulous week.